Hello, my name is Sydney Schaefer and I'm a PhD student in Arjun Raj's lab. Today I'm going to tell you about our recent paper where we used rapid RNA fish on a microfluidic chip to detect respiratory viruses. The technology in this paper is all based upon RNA fluorescence in situ hybridization, or FISH. RNA FISH is a method to visualize RNA in fixed and intact cells. To do this, we use fluorescently labeled DNA oligonucleotides that are complementary to our RNA of interest. By using many of these DNA probes and tiling them along the RNA, we have sufficient sensitivity to label individual RNA molecules, as you can see in this image. For a while, one of the limitations of RNA fish was that hybridization required a minimum of six hours. We previously found that by using methanol fixations and by raising the concentration of these probes, we could perform RNA fish in as little as five minutes. For more information, see our PLOS One paper or the YouTube demo of this technique. Being able to perform RNA fish very quickly opened up the opportunity to use this method for rapid diagnostic technologies. Thus, we decided to try rapid RNA fish for the detection of viruses. Here, our idea was design probes to target viral RNA. When we did this for the first time, we designed RNA fish probes for influenza A. We tested them on influenza A infected MDCK cells and found that it produced a very bright fluorescent signal. In our initial studies, we targeted just one virus. However, we envisioned a scenario in which it would be clinically relevant to know if a patient had one strain of a virus or another. To do this, we would need probes that would target one virus, but that do not crop hybridize to other viruses. To do this, we developed a probe design algorithm that checked for cross hybridization. We tested this design strategy with influenza. Here we designed influenza subtype specific probes for H1N1, H3N2, and influenza B. We tested these probes on samples infected with each of the three viruses, and we found that the probes correctly labeled their target virus, as you can see along the diagonal of these images. Next, we sought to design probes that would label many subtypes of a virus, or even many viruses at once. Thus, we wrote another probe design algorithm that optimized for the fewest probes that can label many viruses. For details on how either of these probe design algorithms work, see our paper. We tested this algorithm and used it to design probes for 348 strains of rhinovirus. We then selected four strains of rhinovirus available through ATCC and infected HeLa cells with these strains. We found that each virus was brightly labeled by the PAN probe design, as you can see in these images. Next, we designed a microfluidic chip to automate the rapid RNA fish assay. Here is a quick photo of the chip. We built it layer by layer. Importantly, embedded between our channels is a track etched filter with five micron holes. This filter catches the cells in the very middle of the chip. If we look from the side, you can see that the cells enter via a fluid reservoir. A syringe pump pulls from the device outlet and cells are trapped under the filter. This allows us to bathe them in the RNA fish reagents. Thus, the turbo RNA fish protocol can be carried out in this device. Here, we load, cell, we load the cells in fixative. We apply our RNA fish probes and wait five minutes for hybridization. Then we perform three one-minute washes, and then we finally image cells directly on the chip. We image the entire area of the filter with a 20x objective and stitch, stitch these images together to make one large image, large image with all the cells that were captured in the assay. We next have an image processing pipeline to classify samples as negative or positive. For details on how this works, see our paper. We envisioned that this assay would be most useful if it could simultaneously detect many viruses at once. Thus, we combined the influenza subtype specific probes and the rhinovirus pan probes into one assay able to label, lab, and labeled each of these probe sets with four different fluorophores. We found that the integrated assay for all four viruses was able to correctly discriminate between viruses. If you look along the diagonal of these images, you can see that the probes are correctly labeling the targeted virus with little off-target classification. Next, we wanted to develop an assay that could resolve single base differences in viruses. 
For influenza, this is clinically relevant as strains of flu have circulated with single base mutations that confer resistance to therapy. Thus, we designed RNA SNP fish probes to specifically discriminate wild type RNA from resistant mutant RNA viruses. For information on how SNPFish works, see the Nature Methods paper or Marshall's slidecast. To test whether our assay could reliably distinguish between drug-resistant and wild-type influenza, we infected MDCK cells with wild-type influenza H1N1 and with a strain of H1N1 engineered to possess a mutation that confers resistance to oseltamivir. We found that our assay was able to correctly classify the RNA as wild-type or resistant mutant. In the top image, the cell is infected with wild-type virus and the RNA is classified as predominantly wild-type. In the next image, the opposite is true. The cell is infected with resistant virus and the RNA is classified correctly. In summary, we developed two probing strategies to specifically discriminate viruses or to label many viruses at once. Next, we developed a microfluidic chip to automate RNA fish. And then finally, we developed a computational pipeline to analyze this image data and designate samples as infected or uninfected. Thank you for taking the time to watch this slidecast. See our paper for more details on any of these components.